morning, folks. Today we're going to be doing some more watering of the straw bales to continue the conditioning process. But I'm also going to add a volume controller for the water flow. Now we bought this perhaps a dozen years ago because we live in an area where most of the water comes from water haul and rainwater catchment. I'll put a link right up here to our video on water haul. Now, it's really interesting because we live in the high desert and a lot of people around us have kind of hobby ranches where they have livestock, which means they haul water. And they haul water in a trailer and it might have 300 gallons, might have 500 gallons. But it's amazing the number of people that we see in town that say, I had to go into town because I ran into town and I left my water running and I ran all the water out of my cattle tank. So now I have to go into town and get water for my cattle. Seems rather silly. So we bought this controller about a dozen years ago so that we wouldn't run our single tank at the time. We only had one single tank for water of 1,500 gallons. Now, 1,500 gallons went a long way for us in those days. It doesn't go so far now when we have a much larger garden. But still, we didn't want to run out. And the problem with running out for us is at certain times of the year, the main road into our property is impassable. It gets muddy and sometimes it gets snowy. So we didn't want to run out. This is safety precaution to running out of water. What I can do is set a certain amount of gallons on the top and the meter is mechanical. So it just measures the amount of water that goes through the meter and shuts the meter off when the preset amount of gallons has gone through. Simple tool, not terribly expensive when we bought it. I'm not sure now exactly where we did buy it, but they're available. And they're good if you're going to be off-grid. So we'll go ahead and get started now. Since I'm not trying to water in fertilizer, I've just turned the hose to soaker. That will allow me to put more water in the bale quicker. Now the reason why we're using that control meter to measure the amount of water that's going is not because I'm worried about running out of water. We have 7,500 gallons of water in the tanks up on the hill. It's because I want to know how much water we're putting into the bales in order to keep them wet enough. That will allow me to figure out how much water I need to have brought on a monthly basis. And I can kind of get an idea about how much it's costing us to run the straw bale garden. You can see how dry this bale surface has become here. It's all dried out and the water is simply sheeting off it, not actually going in on that side. We know that our winds are very, very drying. and We want to try to minimize the amount of moisture loss. I just dug down about one joint of my finger worth into that straw bale. I've done this several times throughout when I've been watering. 
and there's still dampness, there's still moisture when I reach down. I think that's enough watering for right now. I'm going to watch to see if we get any water down in the bottom of the plastic to see if it's actually soaking all the way through. So far, the bales are feeling moist. I think there's enough moisture in there. My concern is the face of these bales. This is dry. It's staying dry. now. I can't really work my fingers down very far, but it feels like there's a little bit of moisture down about three quarters of an inch. I want to try to preserve some of this moisture. And as you might gather from my comments about moisture and water and, and all those sorts of things having to do with growing vegetables and growing other crops on our homestead, I am concerned about the amount of water that we need to use. In fact, there was one person that we watched on YouTube who said, don't do straw bale gardening because it uses too much water. Well, we know how much water our wicking beds take. We know how much water just an ordinary open bottom bed takes for our asparagus. As you can see, there's enough moisture in this bale to continue growing the wheat grass that's in it. Now, our cat Issa loves to eat the wheatgrass. And what Irene noticed yesterday was that she was jumping up on top of these bales. Normally she doesn't get on top of things like this because they're not terribly interesting. I think maybe the fact that there is this grass up here uh, is, is giving her a reason to hop up. But what we're gonna do also is we're gonna put the landscape fabric over the top, not just to preserve the moisture, but also, in case there's any fertilizer on top, we don't want her to get it on the bottom of her feet. Because then she'll lick it off, and then we may have all kinds of other issues. So, we'll use the landscape fabric to cover up to preserve moisture, and to keep our silly cat from getting anything on her feet. I'll be real interested to see how the straw bale garden compares to our other gardening techniques. Come along for the adventure. It's going to be interesting. Thanks for watching. to continue the continue